Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. We are joined by Ustad Lubna, Sheikh Abdullah, and somebody else. Who is that, Ustad Lubna? What's going Whoa, on? Whoa, I didn't even see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This yeah. is our bearded dragon, Chalubi. And he wanted to say assalamu alaikum to all of you. Bearded dragon? He's Muslim. Yeah. He's yeah. Bearded dragon, Chalubi. He's Muslim. He's got a beard. Mashallah, multahi. And a trim yeah. mustache. Trim mustache. Wow. Wow. MashaAllah. <laughs> wow. So, How old is he? Uh, he's a pandemic uh, Chalubi. So he's what? Two. Well, is this three years now? SubhanAllah. 2020, we got him. Is he sensitive with his age? Like you don't want to talk about it in, like in front of him? How <laughs> old he is? And <laughs> starting to get some gray hairs in his beard. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, he's got a long life ahead of him, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Are there, are there pets in Jannah, you know? I just thought I'd... Yeah, so, yeah, I had to, like, grab that cat and, like, just, like, you know, oh, just man, take I this remember. thumbnail with me. You know? He was all over the place, mashallah. Oh, mashallah, tamarakallah. We got a cat thumbnail. We got, for the Jannah series, we got a bearded dragon for Quran 30 for 30. Oh. I think he just waved to us. Um, <laughs> Who will come next? <laughs> Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah. All right. So where, where can people get a bearded dragon from? Petco. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we can set up a donation. If you donate so much money to Yaqeen. To right. Send be you happy. a bearded dragon. Yeah. A bearded dragon in the mail. You know, just pop right out with your donation. <laughs> you donate over $10,000, you get a bearded dragon. In the mail. That's called innovation, you know. Yes. <laughs> That's the haram kind, the halal kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mashallah. So, well, this is an eventful way to start, you know. Mashallah. We got a bearded dragon. Um, and, um, you know, alhamdulillah. We're, we're, I, I forgot what Juz we're in now because of Bearded Dragon. I, Juz 27, Juz 27, alhamdulillah. So it's a special, special time, alhamdulillah, Rabbi I mean. Um, so, Sheikh Abdullah, look, you, the curls, you didn't get that. Let, let me try this one, all right? Let me try this one on you. Just okay. try, try with me, Bismillah. You ready? Bismillah, let's go. All right. Fustad Lubna's Bearded Dragon could do spoken word. What would you call it? Bearded dragons, book. Oh, that's tease. Come on, man. That's easy, man. All right, what is it? He's spitting fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That was uh, the answer, but that was a great, great answer. That's a great answer. I was yes. gonna say a rap tile. Rap tile. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Wow, but spitting fire. Those are two really, really good jokes in one episode. This one, mashallah. Wow, yeah, yes, that that was, was 27th, 27th, the bottle of the 27th. <laughs> <laughs> And the dua of the watchers and listeners, that's what it is. That's obviously what it is. <laughs> After Mufti Abdul Rahman was trying to take shots at you and say, you never get it. So, you, you know, you got it. MashaAllah. You, you, like, you didn't just get it. You know, you did ziyad of, of getting it. You, you got exactly. it and more. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Alhamdulillah. It's great, man. Alhamdulillah. Tayyip, so our, our listeners who are here uh, and watchers who are here, Alhamdulillah, we are getting close to the end. And we also know 27th is a time that a lot of you like to give. Uh, please do consider, inshallah ta'ala, supporting Yaqeen. Alhamdulillah, we could not do this without the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then your support. So with all the efforts that you're doing, uh, this would be a great time for you, inshallah ta'ala, to donate, uh, to to invest in this work. Within we have a lot of exciting things coming on after uh, Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. So the work is just getting started, inshallah ta'ala. So just a reminder to donate, inshallah ta'ala, tune in uh, tonight um, and, you know, for all of the content that we have. If you missed uh, today's episode, it's about meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, um, which is obviously, you know, what we all long for. So we pray Allah Azza wa Jalla allow us all to meet him in the Jannah while he is pleased with us and be with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. Zakallah khaira. Tayyib, we'll get started inshallah ta'ala with just 27. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So subhanAllah, this juz, uh, you know, like so many of these adza, so many of these chapters where you start to have multiple surahs, 
it might not be immediately obvious to you the profound connection that these surahs have to each other and to the overall message of the juz. But uh, there is something about the way that even these surahs are titled. So I want you to think about the most common surah in this juz, Surah Al-Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reveals Surah Al-Rahman and it is one of the earliest surahs of the Qur'an, probably one of the most beloved surahs to the believers. And it is the first surah to be recited in public. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu recited the surah in public in front of the Kaaba and was uh, was beaten and apprehended as a result of that. But Ar-Rahman, like it was so revolutionary. Hal ta'lamu lahu samiyya. Do you know of Ar-Rahman? Yeah. Do you know who Ar-Rahman is? And subhanAllah, you look into Surah Ar-Rahman and what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling our attention to in Surah Ar-Rahman? Allah Azza wa is calling our attention to all of the things that are around us, that are a manifestation of His Rahmah, of His mercy, that we take for granted. And Which of the signs of your Lord, which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? And we're in Ramadan right now where we're supposed to actually be taking note of some of these things where we, we don't pay attention multiple times. So Allah Azza wa talks about the perfect balance of his creation and how that balance is only upset by your disobedience. And look at the rest of the surahs in this juz. Adhariyat, the winds that blow with ease and coolness until you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those winds blow with fury. Then you have a tur the winds, and then you have the mountain of a tur And Allah Azza wa Jal literally, right, takes mountains and puts them above people, uh, crushes people when they disobey him, but those mountains are for us to benefit from and for us to marvel at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you have a najm, right, the star. So you have the winds, the mountain. You have a najm, the star. Uh, and Allah Azza wa talks about the favor of a nujum of the stars to you. But one day those stars will fall and you will know that the day of judgment has arrived. And what spurs the, the end of times is certainly the departure from that initial message of the prophets of Allah and the message of our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then al-qamar, the moon. And the moon is, of course, you know, an object of Allah's creation that our attention is called to frequently. It's a magnificent creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you can look at and you can admire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls our attention to that, that one day, uh, you know, there will be consequences and that will show even in the moon because everything that is above will come to an end. So Rahman has a balance with the creation of the heavens and the earth and with the creation of all these objects around you that you take for granted. And when you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings are preserved for you. When there is disobedience, the balance is upset. And all of that is to lead you to what? al waqiah So right after Al-Rahman, al waqiah which means the inevitable. The inevitable. SubhanAllah. So it will come to pass. And al waqiah you know, starts to talk to us about the human resurrection and what, what comes with the human resurrection of a world that is recreated, but a world not of action, but a world of accountability, which is the place of uh, of the judgment in that in- inevitable event. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to make us amongst those who have a favorable outcome on that day. Allahumma ameen. So it's just so profound that every you know one of these surahs is actually named after some one of one of those signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about in Ar Rahman. And if you look at the very beginning, الذاريات والذاريات ضروة الله سبحانه وتعالى talks about the winds and the, the dust that they carry within them فالحاملات وقرة and Allah سبحانه وتعالى talks about the clouds that carry within them that rain they are full of rain فالجاريات يسرى and Allah سبحانه وتعالى says and then look at the ships gliding along the waters with ease فالمقسمات أمرا and the angels that are apportioning Allah's command as He has decreed in perfect function, in perfect fashion. Every angel does exactly as they are created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees every raindrop. And so the angels that then carry out that decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not bring down a raindrop in any fashion that is more or less than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded it to bring. 
And so you have al muqassimati amra with the wind. You know, when you think about the weather trackers and the way that, you know, the app will tell you the exact temperature or attempt to tell you the exact temperature or what wind speeds and gusts are expected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the forecast already thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And it is precise in detail. And the angels carry out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command exactly as he has commanded it without exceeding or decreasing in any way possible or in any fashion, with any measure. And Allah Azza wa says, إِنَّمَا تُعَدُونَ نَصَادِقْ All of this is to tell you what? What you have been promised will come to pass. إِنَّمَا تُعَدُونَ نَصَادِقْ وَإِنَّ دِينَ لَوَاقِعْ And verily, the day of judgment is inevitable. Okay, so the judgment will certainly come to pass. That's in the very beginning of this juz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at all of these things and look, there are angels that are carrying it out with perfect proportion as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands them to. And it will be in your favor so long as you are responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's call with obedience. And it will be to your destruction if you respond with disobedience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, but what you really should be concerned about is al-waqi'ah, inna ma tu'aduna la sadiq wa inna dina la waqi'ah. It will come to pass. The promise of Allah will come to pass. The day of judgment is inevitable. And then at the end of this uh, juz or towards the end of this juz, uh, you have Al-Waqi'ah and you have Surat Al-Hadid. And Al-Hadid, uh, you know, I, I know Shaykh Abdullah is going to be speaking about this, inshallah ta'ala. Al-Hadid, it, it's subhanAllah so profound because first Allah Azza wa talks about you receiving your books, right? But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the end of it where the believers are going forth with their light. You're authoring a book right now, and that book will be light on the day of judgment. And that's what's be aimanikum. That's what's in your right hands, and it becomes a light for you. And Allah talks about the inevitable here. Now the friends have gone forward, the believers have gone forward with their light, and they are celebrating the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them. And the hypocrites are behind the barrier and they have no light, they have nothing, so they did not prepare for the inevitable. Therefore, they are suffering the consequences of that day. Whereas the believers, right? So the believers are going forth, celebrating with light. And this is your glad tidings. This is your preparation. May Allah make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen and protect us from being of those of the other fates. Allahumma ameen. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, I'll pass it to Shaykh Abdullah. Tfadda Shaykh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'du. MashaAllah, what a great interlude and introduction uh, to what I'm about to speak about, particularly when one looks at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the functionality of the creation, which I think sometimes we, we couple them together, but to separate them is a separation that can only increase us in our, our iman, in al-khaliq, al-raziq, al-mudabbir. When we think about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the clouds, that's a, a noble, it's an amazing creation. When we look up at it and see that we can never actually touch them, but then it has a functionality in it within, it's, within itself. When we fly through the clouds, we're realizing that mechanism, that form of creation has a functionality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just from that aspect of creation in and of itself, and then its application or its functionality amongst its functionalities is bringing down the rain by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just want to touch on that to remind us of the greatness of our creator and to remember that he is the one that we worship and no one else, nothing else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one that tells us in the Quran of the virtuous actions. And the relationship between the creation and the creator is that of fadl and ni'm. It is that of virtue, meaning that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, it is more than we think we quote unquote deserve. And using even using the word deserve for the slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not befitting. But when Allah gives us something because of a good deed that we've done for his sake, for ourselves, he will give us more. And it will be multiplied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that in regards to giving something that he knows that our hearts may lean towards it. Rather, that thing that I'm referring to here, the name of it, even the, 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 the history of it or the background of it even deals with the, the, the self and how the, the nafs, and that is mad. That is money. 
And the money can be something that is a commodity, an object, whether it's rice, cow, dates, or it could be what we know as paper currency now that really has no ultimate intrinsic value. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the ones that give for his sake from that money, from that thing that they lean towards at times and giving it and not seeing anything in return ultimately. And some scholars, subhanAllah, based on this verse, they use the word or the word can be recited in a different way, which shows the motive behind giving the money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the chapter of the hadith, verse number 18. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily for those who give alms or give the sadaqah from the male and female, whether they are men or women, and they give a beautiful loan or a great loan, shall be repaid after increasing in many times, and theirs shall be a generous reward. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first off by, starts off by saying inna. And it's important for us to know that the word inna, which all of us can recite, it means verily. But sometimes we read over it and not understanding, understanding the profundity of it. When Allah says verily, it is though he is giving a promise. He is emphasizing. There are words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses just to emphasize, to show the importance of it or the severity of it. So here when Allah is saying, إِنَّ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَدِّقَاتِ These two types of people, there is something that is very important regarding these two types of people. Or two types, meaning male or female. مُصَدِّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is where, where scholars mention, he puts the shad that مُصَدِّقِينَ and not مُصَدِّقِينَ مُصَدِّقِينَ is what, what scholars mention is تَخْفِيف because the, really the origin of it is مُتَصَدِّقِينَ from Sadaqa. So the ones that give sadaqa, the ones that give alms, the ones that give charity, the spirit behind charity is giving something from your tangible wealth or belongings that which you value and not expecting to receive anything in return from what you value, what you love. Rather, it is for, as we know, a good cause. And it's something that goes beyond your own personal benefit. It is for a group of people or for a certain purpose or movement that helps those that are in destitute or those that are in need or to improve a person's situation. And that is the origin of the, one of the pillars of Islam, zakat. And even zakat means that which is a purification because you take from some to further purify the rest or the remaining. So when we look at sadaqah, some scholars said it's musaddiqin from tasadduq, which is charity. And some said it is musaddiqin because it is the truthful one, like a Siddiq, like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. As a matter of fact, Abu Bakr fulfilled both of these. He was someone that had Tasdiq and he truly believed in the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And Islam, he gave all of his wealth in the ninth year of Hijrah. When, when, when the Prophet saw, when the Prophet was asking Man Yujahizu Jayshan, who was going to prepare the army to go north and to possibly fight in the battle. And this is the story that we know when Abu Bakr gave all of his wealth and Umar gave half of his wealth. And that's when he realized the virtue of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma. In any case, when we see this musaddiqeen wa musaddiqat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala separates the genders here to show the importance of it, number one. Number two, seeing that the females as well give charity as well because sometimes there may be the support from the man, but to show that both, every single individual can give charity and the importance of giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that, وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا And they give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a healthy or a beautiful loan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَقْرَض is literally to loan someone, someone something. قرض. And this is where scholars say it's a general principle in Islamic law in regards to commerce and finance. It's a general rule, but there may be exceptions where said they say, any loan that comes with the benefit, if the person was to make a condition to get a benefit off of the loan, then that could possibly be riba. Bring this up to show you that Allah uses the verb for a loan. And one may ask, why did Allah use this verb to loan him something? Well, when you loan someone something, that means you are expecting something in return. Allah is using this verb to show you that there is a guarantee for the return for you. And when Allah guarantees you something, we have to remember, the reward is much more than you can even anticipate in this life. 
in this life. So for instance, if you were to do a good deed today, Allah doesn't have to repay you for that good deed tomorrow. It may be two years and three days from now. It may be the next life, but he guarantees the reward. And that is what is important for the iman of the Muslim to know that when Allah guarantees it, it's going to happen. Even with ourselves, we can't trust ourselves. Sometimes we made an obligation or a promise to somebody we were not able to fulfill it because of something beyond our control. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing controls him. So when he promises that, know that it is true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقْرَضُ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا They give a goodly loan, meaning that they have the right intention with the ikhlas and with the spirit of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wanting nothing in return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُضَاعَفُ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ It is multiplied for them. That goes to show, again, remembering the basis of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do good for the sake of Allah, Allah will reward you tenfold. Tenfold. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in numerous hadith, that when one does the action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you and multiplies the reward for, for that action. SubhanAllah, when you even think about it, having the intention, you're rewarded for that. You didn't even do the action, but having the intention you rewarded for it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes by saying, وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ And for them is a uh, generous reward. And Allah uses kareem. Kareem is the one that is generous. The one that gives and gives more than you would expect. And that subhanAllah, we say Abdul Kareem, the name of al Kareem, remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. So brothers and sisters, remember that when you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give from your money, give from what you worked hard for, you give it for those that are in need of knowledge. Because when we look at situations of people that may be suffering, there is the physical suffering. But what's most important, subhanAllah, is that person that is suffering, are they calling out on Allah or did they give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So anything that you give, particularly of giving for the sake of Allah, for those to increase in their certainty of God, His presence, His promise, that is what is important. And taking part in that is where, which is so beautiful, as the scholars say, this is the qard al hasan fi sadaqa wa nafaqa. It's to give in the charity and to give in spending. But when you give in that charity, subhanAllah, you're not expecting anything in return for yourself. You're only hoping that the ones that you give to and for benefit. Imagine if you're giving something for someone, for them to increase in their iman, in their belief, in their acknowledgement of the presence of God. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to those that give to worthy causes and to give to the cause for his sake to where inshallah it will return to us in a way that he is pleased with and that he has conditioned. Barakallahu Ustad al-Bna, we inshallah ta'ala turn to you now. Barakallahu alaykum. Jazakallahu khairan. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. So continuing with Surah Al-Hadid, subhanallah there was... Um, and, and an ayah that really struck me, and it's this ayah uh, number 16, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Alam ya'ni lilladheena amanu an taqsha'a qulubuhum la dhikrillah. Has the time not yet come for believers' hearts to be humbled at the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And who are these believers? Think about it. These are believers, these are companions that were living in the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were supporting him. They were fighting with him. They were, they were uh, contributing, subhanAllah, to the cause with money, as uh, Sheikh Abdullah just mentioned. And yet this ayah came as a, rem uh, as a reminder to them in, the, in the, the books of tafsir. It is mentioned here that perhaps that they were engaged in too much uh, uh, you know, laughter and, and, and really not rem remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this reminder came to the best of people. Alam yatni lilladheena amanu an taqsha qulubuhum li dhikr Allah that 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 khushu' uh that humility subhanallah if they are getting reminded of that what about us so many hundreds of years later what about us that has not the time come for us for to humble our hearts for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what's so beautiful this reminder it's not a harsh rebuke it's not saying we're bad for 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 sometimes uh, uh, not humbling ourselves in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges that this world, that this life is full of distractions. So we kind of have the wake-up call. The wake-up call. Has the time not yet come to humble your hearts to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And now here is 
the list of distractions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, is reminding us what this world is like. Know that this worldly life is no more than play, amusement, luxury, mutual boasting, and competition and wealth and in children. SubhanAllah. Many of us, we get caught up in all of these things. SubhanAllah. Literally playing. I mean, how many of us youth, adults, people of all ages, just playing games, literally on the phone, on the console. And, and we're not just talking about a little bit of time to take a break, but really just uh, uh, distracting us from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing with lahu, things that are, you know, vain talk, amusement, just not really taking advantage of our time. And especially in Ramadan, right? Especially in Ramadan, we want to remind ourselves to humble our hearts uh, and, and think about him, inshallah. Luxury, mutual boasting, competition, and we, th we see this all the time uh, on social media, subhanAllah. I hate to be that person to keep reminding about social media, but, but that's what it is, right? Sometimes we're boasting um, to, uh, uh, and, and that mutual boasting, how, how many likes do you have? How many subscribers do you have? Well, alhamdulillah, for yaqeen, we're really proud of how many subscribers we have, but <laughs> that's not for boasting. May Allah accept this for the purpose of spreading knowledge for his sake, inshallah. But the idea is, that this competition and, and this uh, these distractions, this is the nature of this world. So it is easy to get distracted and yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pulling us back and he's reminding us, humble yourselves, humble yourselves. And there's some beautiful description of uh, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah describes three different levels of humility. And I'm not going to go into depth into all of them, but I just wanted to mention them quickly and mention um, the, the, the first one especially. But he says there's three levels of humility and the first one is accepting the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decree. The decree in terms of what happens in this life, the things that are out of your control, as Sheikh Abdullah mentioned. And also the decree in terms of the sharia, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, prescribed for us in terms of rulings and has told in terms of what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do. So when we're humble in that sense, well, I, I will leave that for a moment. So humble in accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Then the second is having the humility in acknowledging your deficiencies. And this is not to put yourself down and I'm terrible and I'm, and I'm lowly and I'm not worth it. Just to be able to have that introspection to say, what are things I need to work on? What are my deficiencies? This is a beautiful uh, a quality to have so that we can better ourselves. We can better ourselves in terms of our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can better ourselves in terms of our connection and our interactions with his creation, subhanAllah. And lastly, there's a humility and not showing off the, the fadl, the na'am, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. When we, when we take this, these definitions of, 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 or these levels of humility, and especially the first one, this is so important. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in a couple more ayahs later, in terms of how do we wrap our head, our mind around things that happen to us, especially when they're very difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah in ayah number 22, so we're just kind of skipping a couple more ayahs. مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَأَهَا no calamity or blessing occurs on earth or in yourselves without being written in a record before we bring it into being. This is certainly easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, we're starting to think about, so what? What, what, what about that? What about this idea of, of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written all of these things? Why? We let you know this so that you neither grieve over what has missed you, um, uh, what has passed you, you didn't get it, or over what, or not to be so boastful over what he has granted you. And subhanAllah, the, 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 the concept of being sad over something that you have lost or being really happy and overjoyed with what Allah has granted you, those are not sinful emotions. Those are excellent. What's sinful is when that sadness comes with a disapproval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an inacceptance of his, uh, unaccepting his uh, decree of what has happened. What we need to do is to have the patience, right? Just to be patient. We don't have to be overjoyed or ecstatic when bad things happen or, or difficult things, but that we have to accept. And same thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, we shouldn't boast over what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. We don't say, I'm the one who studied so hard and that's why... I I'm in this profession. I'm the one who made this much money. I'm the one who did this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated those blessings for you, for you to be able to reach the success. Uh, um, so 
the, the, what, what needs to happen when you have this joy is for it to come with shukr, gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, uh, so in this way, we are humbling our hearts. In, and how? In remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the difficult times and accepting his decree, also accepting his sharia, but then also remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the easy times and in the, the, the joyful times and tying that back to shukr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who will be patient in times of difficulty and grateful in times of ease, inshallah. I mean, jazakumullah khair for the beautiful reflections of Stadi Lubna and Sheikh Abdullah. SubhanAllah, one of the things that came to my mind as you both were speaking is that the akhira becomes such a, it always has its heba, it's, so it's, it causes some fear, it causes some, should cause some fear to the believer, but when you're actively depositing salah and sadaqa into the akhira, you actually have something that you're looking forward to. And it's just the very beginning of the of, of the chapter of Al-Baqarah, right? Uh, and so Allah mentions those who believe in the unseen, the most consequential part of it for us is what is unseen and to come in the hereafter. And Allah gives you your two, your two tools right there establishing the prayer and spending of what Allah has given you. So you're depositing towards al ghaib and you will see it to come inshallah ta'ala in a way that's pleasing to you rather than those who fail to make any deposits and are left with complete darkness on the day of judgment. So any final thoughts, just reflections on this juz and just how it ties into the overall feelings of the hereafter? One, one reflection if I could share, it's a little bit of a amazing scientific discovery, if I may share it. Not that I discovered it, but that I discovered, subhanAllah, as it ties to Surah Al-Hadid. This blew my mind. I was on vacation we uh, in New York, and we decided, uh, my kids decided, alhamdulillah, we want to go to the museum. They booked tickets for the planetarium. We walked all the way there. Right, alhamdulillah, this is a big deal for Californians, okay? We don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> SubhanAllah, so this is amazing. So in, in the ayah, I believe it's, uh, I don't want to misquote, but in a couple more ayahs, uh, towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in hadid, in iron, that there is uh, bets and there's also, uh, there's this, this violence that can be, that we use in, in terms of uh, using iron and that there's also many benefits. And what came to the my, my mind in terms of benefits, I thought, okay, construction, right? We use iron to build, we, we make things out of it. SubhanAllah, this blew my mind when I went to the planetarium. Literally, the aya, it, it popped into my head when I saw this on the screen, that the earth's core is made of iron. There's some other elements in there as well. That molten iron, subhanAllah, it, it allows the, the uh, currents of heat to flow through it. It comes in through the, the North Pole and comes out through the South, and it goes like this. I don't know if it can go on the screen, like this, subhanAllah, through the Earth's core. That convection, that, that flow of, of, hot, uh, of, of hot air creates, subhanAllah, the magnetism of the North Pole and the South Pole, roughly speaking, or don't, don't quote me exactly. But what's absolutely amazing that flow of magnetism, one of the benefits is that it protects the earth from the solar winds. It actually creates a barrier. And this is one of the reasons why life on earth is inhabitable because it is not so scorching heat. There is availability for enough coolness that the plants can grow, that there can be water maintained on the earth's surface. And that magnetism coming from the earth's core, coming from that iron is what allows that to happen. Subhanak ya Totally amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's even if you don't know all that, it's still amazing. Just looking around, you can tell that this is all to your benefit. But the more that you you know, the more in awe you should be of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and his signs and his favors. Subhanallah. Sheikh Abdullah. I'm 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 good. <laughs> I'm just still blown away here. I'm just uh, that was mind blowing, mashallah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah reward you, Ustad Rubna, for sharing that. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdullah. Yeah. Uh, for everyone that is tuning in, inshallah ta'ala, it's, as it's the 27th night, please keep us in your dua, inshallah ta'ala. And please, again, we ask for your support. Part of that support is donations, part of it is dua. Um, and we pray for forgiveness uh, for all of us. and should it be Laylatul Qadr, may Allah Azza wa Jalla allow us to be amongst those who observe it. Allahumma ameen. Barakallahu feekum everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.